Hey guys, so I'm recording this lecture video on the last three sections of notes number three because today, Monday, the rainy Monday that we're having, a lot of you decided not to come. So I figured if for some reason you need a little bit of information of what you missed in class, that you could watch this quick little video. So we're going to go, and we started with the New Deal Under Attack, which is a review of what we did last Friday. And Under, uh, under Attack means that it was being criticized, so the New Deal had a lot of critics. One of the biggest uh, criticisms they had was deficit spending, the idea that the government spends more money than it has. And it's true, FDR said he was going to help a lot of people, but he also said, I'm going to have to spend money we don't have, and that resulted in tons of deficit spending. And what critics argue is you can't do that much deficit spending because they argue that deficit spending is like a ticking time bomb for our economy, and that, yeah, you spend the money now, and it gives you something good or like helps people now, but in the future, when we have to pay back that money, this bomb is going to explode, and it's going to destroy our economy and our society. Now, luckily, as I mentioned before, this never happened because... We're going to open up Walmart during World War II, and we're going to make so much money off of that that it easily pays back all the money we spent for the New Deal, and we didn't ever have this issue. But it is an issue. Now, there was a group who's going to criticize the New Deal, and that group is going to be the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has the power to look over anything that has been passed by the president or by Congress and decide whether it is constitutional or unconstitutional. If something is considered by them unconstitutional, it means that they have the power to get rid of it. And they did three different times. They got rid of the National Industrial Recovery Act, which is to help workers. They got rid of the Agricultural Adjustment Act, which was to help the farmers. And they got rid of the Wagner Act that was helped to help to, meant to help the unions and, the, and workers as well, obviously. Now, when they got rid of these three, they didn't argue that these were three bad acts or they didn't help anybody and we just got to get rid of them. They simply argued that you never had the power to pass them in the first place. They, are, they need to go because all three of these acts only could be passed, and you see, by the states. So since the federal government, Congress, never had the power to pass these laws, then therefore the laws need to go away. So what they argued was if each state passes their own version of the NIRA and the AAA and the Wagner Act, then it's okay. But since the federal government did it, it needs to go away. Now, for FDR, this is kind of the first time the government, somebody in the government has told him no. Since he became president, um, he's made tons of changes, and Congress has pretty much been on his side constantly. So he asks, for a, he, he asks for an act, and Congress says yes, they pass it. He asks for another act, they pass it. So it's a lot of yes coming out of Congress. FDR was very powerful, and FDR was very loved across the country. So even if you're a congressman and you didn't agree with him, you weren't going to go against him. You're just going to say yes and pass whatever act he wanted you to pass. But the Supreme Court here says no to him three different times. And the Supreme Court is made up of nine judges. So there are nine judges to make the decisions. And every single one of these decisions that he lost, one, two, three, that he lost, he lost by a count of five to four. So five voted against him, four voted for him for each one of them. So he barely lost by one vote on all three of them. So at this point, FDR has been rejected three times. His acts have been deemed unconstitutional. And he should basically say, well, you know, this is the way our government works. That's why we have three branches of government. That's why we have checks and balances. And I don't like it, but I got to move on. But FDR did not move on because instead what he did, he responds to the Supreme Court decision, again, that he didn't like by trying to pass the court packing bill. Now, what the court packing bill was, the goal was he was kind of trying to get control of the Supreme Court as well. As I mentioned earlier, every time he asked Congress for something, they said yes. So he kind of had control over Congress already. So he was the president. He was in charge of his branch. He has so much power over Congress that he's kind of in charge of that branch. But when the Supreme Court told him no three times, his response is, I'm going to pass the court packing bill and I'm going to have some control over the Supreme Court as well. And how do you do that is by adding six new judges. So instead of having nine judges in the Supreme Court, he would add the move it to 15. Now, the thing is, uh, the way that our judges get appointed into the Supreme Court is first the president has to nominate you and then Congress has to approve you. So if you're not nominated by the president, you can never be a Supreme Court justice. So what type of judges is FDR going to nominate to fill those six positions that he wanted to add? Of course, people who are Democrats who thought exactly like him. So if he added six new judges and they were all like him, instead of losing five to four, those six would be added to the four, and now he'd be winning 10 to 5, 10 to 5 on all these type of decisions. So now he would have control over Congress and pretty much over the Supreme Court as well. But luckily, Congress said no. 
They realized that this was too much power and they say no to this potential law and they got rid of it. It was too much power for him to have over the other branches. So this was basically them telling FDR, you know, you need to back off. You're trying too much. So ultimately, this led to them passing the 26th, 22nd Amendment, which limits the president to two terms or eight years, because they thought if FDR, who we love and we trust, tried to get power hungry here and we had to reject him, well, what about a future president who is really power hungry but is not a good guy? We want to make sure that the president only serves a certain amount of years, and that is two terms or eight years. The impact of the New Deal, Section 12, basically says that 1937, the economy had improved enough where most Americans thought the Depression was over. It wasn't all over, but it was close to getting over. By 1939, the New Deal was basically over because in 1939 is when World War II begins and FDR starts to pay a lot more attention to Europe, you know, Germany and Hitler, and we open a Walmart. And when we open a Walmart, once again, we start selling so many supplies, so many weapons, so much food that we make so much money that basically we don't need uh, the New Deal programs and our economy just takes off. Effects of the New Deal, Section 13. So basically, after all those changes that FDR made, Roosevelt made the federal government bigger. It expanded it. Because if you're going to act a, add a whole bunch of acts and agencies, then you're going to need people to work it, and you're going to have agencies that never existed before now exist. So it just means that the federal government got bigger and more powerful. It created tons of new jobs. Like if, think about it for the direct relief. Direct relief was meant for everybody across the country. How many offices would you have to set up for direct relief in every city? A lot. And how many people would work in all these offices across the country? A lot. And all those were federal jobs. We regulated supply and demand. For the first time in, in our country's history, the government started paying attention to the economy and not only paying attention, but actually being involved with it. Up to this point, the economy took care of the economy. The business took care of business. The government didn't get involved. But FDR, when he passed like the Agriculture Adjustment Act and he paid farmers not to farm a certain part of their territory, what that meant for that worker, I mean, for that farmer was he could only plant the rest of it. And because he planted the rest of it and it was less, that meant the demand went up and people paid him more for his food, which is supply and demand. So regulated means that you'd get involved with supply and demand. Uh, he got involved with disputes between labor and the union and the management. This is where he passed the Wagner Act. And then we set up, set up big agencies that are still around today. FDIC that helps with the banks. SEC that helps with the stock market. So the government got way bigger, way more powerful, and way more involved. But ultimately, as I mentioned, it's the massive amount of spending of World War II, which is Walmart, that ended up getting out of the Great Depression. And that is all. Thank you.